In this video, we will be discussing the five insane true stories that will change how you think about World War II. The revolutionary ideas of Nikola Tesla inspired modern electric car manufacturers. He also inspired World War II-era Japan to even higher levels of insanity when he uttered two little words, death and ray. After famously inventing an earthquake machine, alternating current and even drones, Nikola Tesla claimed in 1934 that he had a death beam that could wipe out entire armies. This was never proven, and most of the world didn't seem to take the idea very seriously, except for Japan, who took it seriously enough to give their scientists the dramatic sum of 1 million yen to build one of these things. In 1943, work began at the Shimada City Research Facility on developing a high-power magnetron that, if not as capable as Tesla had boasted, could at least incapacitate an aircraft. A number of Japan's leading physicists were involved in this activity, including Sin Itiro Tomonaga, a future Nobel Prize winner. He was involved in the appropriately titled Project Power, which by the end of the war had produced a legit death ray prototype capable of killing at a distance of up to half a mile. The catch. The target had to stand perfectly still for five to ten minutes, so this doomsday device would have been effective only against the extremely lazy. The prototype wasn't particularly cool looking either. It was just a magnetron, equipment mostly used for radars back then, and a 70 five-foot mirror, which is generally not something you'd try to haul to a battlefield. Still, it was a work in progress, and it did work. Japan's mad scientists successfully tested it against tied-up rabbits, monkeys, and marmots, and even managed to use it to stop a motor if the hood was up. Japan never got a chance to use their death ray during battle. We have no idea what happened to the prototype, but we can only hope some American soldier snuck it home and used it to cook hamburgers from a mile away on the 4th of July. The fourth insane true story is the story about the amazing deception called Operation Mincemeat, the British devised with the help of a dead body. Operation Mincemeat was a spectacular deception created by British intelligence to fool the Germans regarding the true target for the Allied invasion of Sicily. A dead body would be planted off the coast of Spain, carrying secret documents which appeared to reveal that the targets for the upcoming invasion would be Greece and Sardinia, with Sicily only intended ended as a trick. To ensure that the Germans believed the deception, it was necessary to create a detailed false identity for the body, which was that of a homeless laborer. The secret operation involved dressing this corpse as a major in the Royal Marines and giving it the false identity of William Martin. Appropriate identification documents and other papers would give the body a level of credibility. These included a photograph of Major Martin's fiancée, a receipt for an engagement ring, a theatre ticket stub, and other evidence. Early on April 30th of 1943, the body of Major Martin was launched into the sea from the British submarine and left to drift just over a mile off the southern Spanish coast. Once recovered by the Spanish authorities, the secret documents carried on the body were secretly opened, photographed, and passed via Nazi sympathizers to German intelligence officers in Spain. The Germans acted swiftly on the false information by doubling the number of troops sent to Sardinia, while many additional German divisions were also transferred to Greece and the Balkans. The Allied invasion of Sicily was launched on July 9, 1943, and proved a huge surprise to the German defenders. In just over a month, the island was fully captured by the Allies, and the lack of enemy reinforcements had proven to be a deciding factor in the success. After Operation Mincemeat, Germans got their hands on some actual papers from the D-Day invasion from another body that was discovered. The Germans thought back to Operation Mincemeat and figured it was another diversion attempt and decided to ignore it. The third insane true story is that the Nazis had an Arctic base that was making material to help build an atomic bomb and 11 men took it out. February 28th will mark the 81st anniversary of one of the most dramatic and important military missions of World War II. After handing the 11 Norwegian commandos their suicide capsules, Norwegian Royal Army Colonel Leif Tronstad informed his soldiers, I cannot tell you why this mission is so important, but if you succeed, it will live in Norway's memory for a hundred years. This sounds like some badass Kirk Douglas movie, in fact it is, but it's exactly what happened during Operation Gunnicide on 
February of 1943. When the Germans invaded Norway in the early 1940s, they took over a factory in Telemark that produced heavy water, which is needed to make plutonium for an atomic bomb. The Allies sent 30 British Army officers to sabotage the plant, but a combination of awful weather and the Gestapo killed the entire group. So, the Allies sent something even more deadly than 30 Brits, 11 Norwegians. As if the mission wasn't insane enough, the Germans then decided to strengthen the plant's defenses, plant landmines, and add more guards all over the factory. The only way to get into the factory was a Nazi-held bridge over a 660-foot ice gorge, or at least the Germans thought that was the only way in. The Norwegians simply climbed down the supposedly unscalable ice gorge and snuck into the factory. They laid the explosives and were about to light the fuse and escape, but, and this is not a joke, the factory's Norwegian caretaker, whom they were holding at gunpoint, declared that he'd lost his glasses and refused to leave until they were found. Naturally, the resistance fighters put the plan on hold until they'd located his glasses. Not only did the commandos complete their mission without casualties, but they released the caretaker and another civilian as soon as the fuses were lit. The winter sabotage of the Vimork chemical plant in Telemark County of Nazi-occupied Norway was one of the most dramatic and important military missions of World War II. It put the German nuclear scientists months behind and allowed the United States to overtake the Germans in the quest to produce the first atomic bomb. If you're enjoying this video, then smash the subscribe button. This is the second insane true story. The Nazis considered using mosquitoes as biological weapons during the Second World War. Towards the end of the war, German scientists at an institute in Dachau conducted research into how malaria-infected insects could be kept alive for long enough to be released into enemy territory. The fact that they didn't use any biological weapons is all thanks to one individual who single-handedly disrupted this Nazi superplot. This individual was Adolf Hitler himself. Perhaps we should explain. In 1943, a high-ranking Nazi scientist recommended America must be attacked simultaneously with various human and animal epidemic pathogens as well as plant pests. And they totally could have done it. The Nazis had already carried out a series of bizarre insect-related tests, at one point even toying with the idea of releasing up to 40 million weaponized potato beetles over England's crops. There's an alternate reality where Beatlemania refers to the time half of Britain starved because of Nazi bugs. And the number one insane true story of World War II was that Japan and Germany planned to send a dirty bomb to America delivered by kamikaze submarines. In the days before Germany surrendered to Allied forces, the Nazis ordered a U-234 submarine to take whatever remaining weapons and materials were left in their arsenal to Japan. One of the materials that was being shipped was uranium, the essential ingredient for creating an atomic bomb. The likely plan was to get the Japanese engineers to build a dirty bomb. A dirty bomb is a bomb with radioactive material attached to a normal bomb or explosion. Their plan was to deliver the dirty bomb to the United States' west coast. This would have caused tremendous damage on the west coast. To actually get the dirty bomb to America, the Japanese would have used I-400 class submarines, which launched kamikaze aircraft via catapults. Japan had a whole bunch of those equipped with planes decorated in fake US markings for extra confusion. Obviously, none of that happened. Some believe the uranium did technically get to Japan, just not in the way they expected. According to a former official of the Manhattan Project, after the U-234 submarine was captured en route to Japan, thanks to code breakers, the German uranium ended up going into the American atom bomb program. The U.S. then dropped it on Hiroshima. The U.S. was low on uranium when this little radioactive gift fell in its lap, so it was arranged for it to be conveniently misplaced. This is still officially denied because apparently the U.S. won the war with Nazi uranium wouldn't look great in history books. Click here to watch the next video. Also, please smash the subscribe button, and if you made it this far, click on the like button.